Hi there, everybody. Welcome to genetics lecture video number three. This is our actually our second type of genetics cross. This genetics cross is called incomplete dominance and or codominance. It depends on the type of problem that you have. These genetics crosses are a little different than the first ones that we learned. In the first ones that we learned, we noticed there was a dominant and a recessive. We had two, a dominant or a recessive. Two options is what we had. Okay. In these types of genetics crosses, we don't have complete dominance. Both alleles. So you're going to have two different alleles, two different genes, and both of them are actually dominant in this case. So incomplete dominance is the type of genetics cross where you get two dominant genes, they meet, and they form something in the middle. So it's kind of like tall, short, medium. Red, white, pink in the middle. So you both genes are adding to the overall phenotype or the characteristic, and they meet in the middle. That is what is called incomplete dominance. So they call it an intermediate rather than the middle or an intermediate or a blended type of phenotype. Codominance is similar yet different. For example, if you're using colorations, they don't blend that you would have two of each type. So let me give you an example of codominance. Let's say, and there's animals that have this where they might have a mixture of say red and white fur or brown and white fur. So you can get a, for example, a red hair gene and a white hair gene, both of them are dominant. So then the organism is made up of some red and some white hair. They're not in between. There's not pink hair in this case. There would be red hair and white hair. So both colorations would show. So these are two types of alleles. Both of them are dominant. And they usually show them as what's called a superscript, a capital letter that comes above another letter okay my tip to you guys i'm going to show you some shortcuts to make your life simpler so it doesn't get so messy but the most important letter that you have are these capitals the, the capital r's in this case or the y's in this case the c's don't tell us a whole lot okay so i noticed a glare in the middle of the screen so i'm going to slide this up and explain to you how these possibilities work So here we go. Here are some examples to show you how these work. All right. I know it's hard to see the letters, but you should have this paper printed in front of you. This first one says, and I'm only giving you the letters on top, the superscript. Those are the important letters. Okay. Because you'll notice in this first line here, there's capital C's everywhere. All right. So the capital C isn't the important letter. In this one, these are capital R's and these are capital W's. All right. So the first example is showing you incomplete dominance. And I already used this example. There's two, R, two capital R's is red. Two capital W's is white. A capital R, a capital W, or an uppercase R, uppercase W, same thing, would give you pink, a mixture of the two colors. That is incomplete dominance. Here's the other example. Let's show you what a codominance one is. Two capital R's is a red. Two capital W's is a white. An R and a W would give you a red and white furred animal in this case. It, this is called codominance. Same thing here. Two Ys is yellow. Two Bs is blue. A B and a Y in any order, Y, B, B, Y, it doesn't matter, would give you green. Yellow and blue make green. That's the intermediate. Some birds have two, two Ys is yellow in that bird. Two Bs would be blue. And some birds have a mixture of blue. Some birds will have a mixture of blue and yellow feathers, so that would be codominance, all right? So there's codominance and there's incomplete dominance. Incom incomplete dominance finds a medium or an intermediate. Codominance shows you both of those particular characteristics, okay? So let's do some prompts. Students generally find these ones simpler to do. So let's do the first one together. I'll slide it up so you can see it. All right, let's do the first one together. All right, here's the first one. And the flying muskrat, it's hard to see, but you should have this printed in front of you. In the flying muskrat, there's a, an uppercase B and an uppercase B. It's hard to see, but those are uppercase Bs is black fur. 
uppercase B, uppercase W is grayfur. Okay? Uppercase W, uppercase W, white fur. So we have three phenotypes, not two phenotypes like the first type of genetic stress, three possible phenotypes. We have black, gray, and white possibilities. Okay? Then we say if two gray furred muskrats are crossed, so both of the parents are gray. And if you look back into our prom, gray fur is one capital B and one capital W. Okay, so the P's are not as important. You will notice now when I show you the genetics problems, I'm not even going to put the capital P anywhere because it is not necessary. It will create a lot of clutter when you're working out the problem. I'm only going to use the uppercase B's and the uppercase W's when I work these out. Both of the parents are gray. So gray means you have a black and a white gene, a B and a W. So this is one parent. There's the other parent. Both of the parents, two Grayford muskrats mate. You split them apart. B, W, B, W. The top ones come down, the side comes over. Right? That's what it ends up looking like. Right. Here's the first question. What is the probability they will have a black furred muskrat? Well, black needs two uppercase Bs. We have one of them that is black. The answer would be one-fourth. Gray. How many of them are gray? Two of them are gray. All right. Two-fourths becomes one-half. Reduce the fraction. And white. How many of them are white? One of them is white. That is one out of four. Okay? That is the first type of problem. Now, I'm going to show you how to do the second one in a second. You might want to pause the computer, try it on your own, and see if you can duplicate what I just did before you actually see me do it. All right? So if I were you right now, pause it, try it, and then start it up again and check yourself. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. All right. All right. Sample problem number two. Okay. Sample. Oh, I see a little glare. Let me move it a little bit. All right. Sample problem number two. All right. Here's what it says. In turtles, the sharp tooth allele is T with a capital Q. It's kind of hard to see, but that's a capital Q. The dull tooth allele is T with a capital D. That's a capital D. That's a capital Q. So sharp teeth are Qs. Dull teeth are Ds. Okay. Some turtles have a mixture of sharp and dull teeth. So they get a Q and a D. All right. Two Qs, sharp. Two Ds, dull. One of each, a Q and a D, and you have a mixture of sharp and dull teeth. All right? Let's first figure out the parents. One is sharp. Okay? So one is sharp. Sharp is Qs. So one of the parents has two Qs. All right? Then they mate with a turtle that has a mixture of sharp and dull teeth. So they mate with one that has Qs and D's. Okay? You split them apart. Q's go there. Those go on the side. You bring them over. Q. Okay. All right? Then, then, let's answer it. What's the probability they will have a sharp tooth offspring? All right. Sharp teeth are back here. Aren't sharp teeth two Qs? Two Qs are sharp teeth. Okay. To have sharp teeth, how many of them have sharp teeth? Two out of four, which becomes one half. Okay. That concludes.
the video on how to do what, what are called incomplete and co-dominance type of genetics crosses. Don't forget, everything is dominant. All capital letters, all uppercase. There's no recessive genes in these types of genetics crosses.